NPV and IRR sound simple and honestly they are but in interviews the moment someone twist the question just a little they suddenly become tricky that's because there are subtle but important difference between NPV IRR discount rate opportunity cost of capital and knowing them can make all the difference you have probably seen interview questions like what's the difference between NPV and IRR if a project A has 25% IRR and 500 NPV and project B has 20% IRR but 1000 NPV, which one would you choose? Can a project have multiple IRRs? If you are offered 1000 today or 1200 after a year, how should you decide? And what's the difference between IRR and opportunity cost of capital? In this video, we will break all of these down step by step, not just to crack interviews, but to truly understand how these investment rules work. And before we dive in, if you are new to the channel, I simplify finance concepts and tackle real interview questions. So hit subscribe and let's get started. Let's start with something really basic, the time value of money. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. It sounds obvious, but this one idea is the foundation of all financial decision making. Think about this. If I gave you dollar hundred today and you could invest it in, let's say, a fixed deposits in a bank that earns you 5%. So you could have dollar $105 by next year, right? But if I offered you 100 next year, instead of offering you today, if I offer you dollar 100 next year, you would be losing that opportunity to grow. So basically, you are in a loss of $5. So that's why the same money in the future is not worth the same as money today. So that's where this idea of net present value or NPV comes in. Whenever you are evaluating any investment, the right question is not just how much money will I get. The real question is how much is that future money is worth today. In other words, how do I adjust future cash flows to reflect their true value in today's terms? That's what NPV helps you figure out. Let's walk through an example to make this crystal clear. Say you invest $1000 in an office building today and you expect it to give you a return of 1300 after one year. So basically your 1000 is becoming 1300. But there is another option. You could put same $1000 into a mutual fund of similar risk, assume that these two have similar risk that earns you a 12% per year. So you have option, you can invest here, you can invest here. Now you have to decide whether you should invest here or not. So your next best safe alternative is mutual fund, which is giving you 12% return. So when you are evaluating your office building investment, you need to use this as a discount rate because that's the return you require for a project of similar risk. This has the same risk as your mutual fund. Now to evaluate what is this 1300 in present value, what you need to do is you need to, let's say you need to calculate NPV. So this is minus 1000. So this is your initial investment. Plus you need to discount your future money by 12% which is the discount rate. This is also known as opportunity cost of capital because this is your next best alternative to invest in. So easily, if you are not investing $1,000 in office building, if you invest in mutual fund, you will get that 12%. So this is your opportunity cost of capital if you invest in office building. So this is the minimum return that you want from your office building. So if you do the math here, this will give you 161. So after discounting, the NPV comes out to be 161. So what does that mean? This means is even after discounting, even after your minimum 12% requirement, you are over and above $161. Your office building is giving you more wealth compared to your mutual fund. And this is one. So this is NPV, positive NPV. So you are satisfying your minimum criteria of 12% and over and above that you are getting 161. So that's the core idea. So if you need to evaluate any project, if your NPV is greater than zero, the project adds value. The investment returns more than your required rate. If NPV is equal to zero, for example, instead of 1300, your office building is giving again 1120. So you are neutral. You earn exactly the same required return. No extra value is created. If your NPV is less than zero, your project is destroying values. So this is how you evaluate whether you should invest in a project or not. Now let's take one more example. Let's say there are three projects. 
Before that, let me tell you how to calculate NPV in Excel. Let's take a simple example which we just did. For calculating NPV in Excel, let's use NPV formula. So rate, for this case it was our discount rate was 12%. Value, remember you don't have to take your initial investment when you are putting your value. It should start from year 1, not the initial investment. If you take 1000, it will discount that 1000 as well. So you don't have to discount your initial investment because that's your year 0 investment. So you have to discount year 1. So start your flow from year 1 and then out of NPV just subtract your initial investment. This will give you 161 approximately. So this is how you do in Excel. Remember that you don't have to include your initial investment in Excel formula. Now let's get back to our three project example. So each project is costing you 2000 but all of them have different cash flow. Here you can see 500, 500, 5000. Similarly, here you have 500 and 1800 and here it's like 1800 to 500. And assume our cost of capital is 10% and when we discount all this cash flow, so let me write for example 1. So this is our initial investment plus 500. Now you have to discount this 1 plus 10%. Discount this one as well, 1 plus 10% to the power 2 because it is you need to discount it twice. You have got the discount for this one year, then you have to discount it to this year. So basically twice and then 5000 divided by 1 plus 10% and it should be thrice. So if you do the math, you will get 2624. So positive NPV of 2624. Similarly, if you do the math for these two projects, you will get for this one minus 50 and for this one plus 50. So what this implies? So project A clearly creates the most value with an NPV of about 2624. Let's say if you had to choose only one project, there is a NPV rule which says go with the project that has the higher NPV. So here for us, if we need to select only one project, it's better to select project A. So that's the foundation. The discount rate is your opportunity cost of capital. The return you expect for taking on that risk. And NPV shows you how much extra value a project creates after meeting that required return. But in real life, people always don't think in dollar terms or rupees terms. They think in percentages. So they will ask, what's the project return? And that's where the internal rate of return comes in, which is known as IRR. IRR is basically the project's own rate of return. It tells you the average return generated purely from your project's cash flow. Let's take a simple example and keep building on that. If you invested $1,000, in office billing and you are getting 1300 this is a simple example like one year cash flow only if you want to find out the rate of return this will be 1300 minus 1000 your investment this you are getting divided by your initial investment into 100% this will give you 30% so basically you are earning 30% return now compare this with your mutual fund which was giving you 12%. So the return on your office building is higher than the opportunity cost of capital, the return you were getting from mutual fund. So 30% is greater than 12%. So this suggests the rule for deciding using IRR. So if your rate of return is greater than your opportunity cost of capital, you should invest in that project. So both rules are setting the same cutoff. By that, I mean, let's say, your NPV formula was this minus 1000 plus 1300 divided by 1 plus R. Now suppose the rate of interest on the mutual fund is not 12% but 30%. So your R opportunity cost would be 1300 1 plus now you will discount it by 30%. And if you do this calculation your NPV will be 0. So basically at this new opportunity cost of capital your NPV is 0. And this was our IRR of the project. So rate of return rule suggests that there is now nothing to choose between taking the project and leaving your money in the mutual fund. The NPV rule likewise tells you that if interest rate is 30%, the end project is evenly balanced with an NPV of 0. So now again, if your IRR is equal to opportunity cost of capital, there is nothing to choose between taking the project or leaving your money in mutual fund. You are equal. So now here comes the another definition of IRR. It's the discount rate which makes your NPV zero. Now let's look at the NPV profile graph because if you change the discount rate, you will get a different NPV. So let's try to plot that out and see how it looks. 
सो योर कैश फ्लो वॉज माइनस थाउजेंड प्लस थर्टीन हंड्रेड डिवाइडेड बाई वन प्लस आर नाउ वी हैव सीन दैट एट आर इज इक्वल टू थर्टी परसेंट आर एन पी वी इज जीरो थर्टी परसेंट वॉज आर आई आर आर सो एट थर्टी परसेंट आर एन पी वी इज क्रॉसिंग दिस लाइन वी ऑल्सो सॉ एट ट्वेल्व परसेंट इट वॉज गिविंग एज अ पॉजिटिव एन पी वी ऑफ वन सिक्सटी वन so at 12% which is around this you are getting 161 right if you discount it by 10% it will be somewhere around here if it's above 30% let's say it's 35 your npv is negative so that project is bad project and if you plot this i have already plotted but if you plot this line changing your discount rate you will get a downward sloping npv profile that crosses the horizontal axis at irr so that's the definition IRR is the discount rate which makes your NPV zero. Now let's take a quick two-year example just to see how IRR works when you have more than one inflow. Suppose you invest thousand, and you will receive six hundred in year one, six sixty in year two. So we saw IRR is the rate which makes your NPV zero. So NPV is equal to zero, and if you solve this for IRR. you will get 12% so this means that the project is project earns a 12% annual return on its cash flows so if your irr is greater than opportunity cost of capital so basically 12% is greater than your opportunity cost of capital you will accept it and if it's below opportunity cost of capital you will reject it just keep this in mind as long as the project's npv profile is downward sloping meaning as your discount rate increases your npv is reducing both the irr rule and npv rule will give exactly the same decision of accepting or rejecting we will discuss this in detail in next section but before that given that now you have understood irr opportunity cost of capital and npv you can answer interview question what is the difference between irr and opportunity cost of capital tell me in the comments how would you answer this clearly and confidently in an interview a pro tip here always add an example when explaining any conceptual question so while you are explaining the difference between irr and opportunity cost of capital use numbers and make some example and then explain it many firms love using irr because it feels intuitive it's in percentage terms but it has few traps when it's used correctly it matches npv but when used blindly it can give the wrong answer so let's look at some of the common pitfalls here is a project the same project our initial proposal where we are investing 1000 and we are getting 1300 by year 1 same office building project now let's say there is a revised proposal we are investing 1000 but our cash flows are in year 1 we are getting 100 year 200 and year 3 1400 so same outlay but cash flow years are different if you see for initial proposal our irr is 30% for revised proposal our irr is 18% so as per irr rule we should go with first project which is 30% but if you look at npv here it's discounted at 10% we will get 182 as npv and revised proposal it's 235 so as per npv rule we should support revised proposal both are in conflict irr rule says initial proposal npv says revised proposal so irr prefers quick payback projects where in year 1 only you are getting almost all of the amount but that does not always maximize wealth let's say if you plot npvs of these two proposal against the discount rate so this is your initial proposal where your irr is 30% and here npv is 0 and this is your revised proposal npv you can see at this point both of these projects are crossing so this is known as crossover point and i have already plotted so it's at 11.7% these two profiles are crossing over so below crossover point let is that is less than crossover point your if you go through npv you can see your revised proposal has higher npv if your discount rate is higher than crossover point your initial proposal has higher npv so for these kind of projects where you need to select between two it's always preferable to go with npv rule let's say you had a choice to select both the proposal like you were not bound to select any one of the proposal 
then because your IRR is greater than your opportunity cost of capital, you would select both the proposal. Similarly, for the NPV rule, because your NPV is positive, you can select both. But when you have to select one, so when your project is mutually exclusive, you have to go with either one of them. It's always better to use NPV rule. It will always maximize your wealth. Now let's look at another example where your outlays are different. So this is your initial investment. So basically the scale of project is different. This is small, this is large. If you see IRR, your IRR is 30% for this small project and for this one 25%, NPV 18 and 136. So again, IRR, in your previous example, it was preferring IRR which gives you early cashbacks. So here too, IRR favors the small project with 30%, but NPV shows the larger one adds more value. So remember, percentages don't make you rich, cash does. So focus on NPV. So always prefer NPV. Let's see another case. One project is lending, other one is borrowing. You are lending 100 and you're getting cash flow of 150 after one year. You're borrowing 100 and you have to give out 150 after one year. If you notice your IRR doesn't differentiate, it says 50% here also, it says 50% here also. But if you calculate NPV at 10%, you can see here it's 36, here it's minus 36. So it's the same IRR but opposite meaning. Lending it at 50% is great, but borrowing at 50% is not. So IRR rule can't distinguish the direction. You always have to see NPV because here you can see NPV shows the sign. It's the same number, but it shows the sign 36 and minus 36. Pitfall number three, some of the projects, instead of having a unique IRR, it may give you multiple IRR, meaning your NPV is getting zero twice. So the curve of such projects will look like this. Your NPV is getting zero here. So an IRR one, IRR two. So imagine a mining project costing 210 million minus 210 million is your initial investment and generating 125 million per year in first two years, then 175 in year three and four and finally requiring 400 million for land restoration. Here also you have to invest something. So here it's minus 400. So if you notice your cash flow is changing sign. First it was minus, then it was plus, then minus. So the number of sign change tells you how many IRR your cash flows may produce. So here one sign change minus to plus, then plus to minus another sign change. So these cash flows are going to give you two IRRs. One would be lower, other would be higher. So you won't be able to decide using IRR. But when you calculate NPV at different discount rates, so if you try to plot NPV curve, you will see this curve. You can see between these to this, your NPV is positive. So when your discount rate is between this, your NPV is positive. So your NPV rule will always give you right answer. Let's say if you're discounting at 2%, your NPV says no, you don't have to go with this project. If your discount rate is 35%, your NPV will be negative again. And it will say no, you should not go with this project. Only between these two discount rate, your NPV will be positive and this will give you a clear indication of whether you should go with this project or not. So these are some of the common pitfalls of using IRR. Mutually exclusive projects, we saw IR favors quick projects. Different outlays where your initial investments are different, it prefers smaller project. Lending versus borrowing, same IRR, it does not distinguish between what is lending, what is borrowing. It gives you same positive percentage and then multiple IRRs where multiple signs of cash flow are changing. So if your cash flow sign changes from minus plus minus plus. So basically it's one change, second change and then third change. So this will give you three IRRs. But there is a way to deal with this issue of IRR. It's called modified IRR, also known as MIRR. MIRR fixes the reinvestment rate assumption and always gives one clear and realistic return. If you would like me to cover that next comment MIRR below, I will make a dedicated video on it soon. Meanwhile, I have attached a short write-up in the description explaining what MIRR is and how it fixes IRR issue. And that's it. Now you can confidently answer all those questions we started with like a true finance pro with clarity and logic. So now it's your turn. Drop your answers in the comments. Try all five questions or at least two of them. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.